everyone to a brand new getting color right here on the big brand.com also check out patreon.com slash big v mafia i am virtue and that is the man that you come here for to listen to big Vito Lagrasso taking the indies by storm traveling north of the border now what's up man Everything is good. Um, I want to thank everybody um, in CWE Elite, the whole team. Um, what a great time, great people. Um, it was their first two shows, and it were anniversary shows after after COVID. And uh, the houses were good. You know, the people came out. The most important thing is they had a great time. They enjoyed themselves. They went home happy. And that's what it's about. So, you know, sometimes... You know, um, people are worried about how many seats you fill and whatever, but it's about how the crowd reacts when they leave mm -hmm. that brings to the next house. So everybody had a good time. So we're good. Good times. I mean, you want to get right into our topics? I, I know we had a nice long what's on Vito's mind last week to start the show. But I got topics to talk about, so now we did we did we did mine. We're gonna do yours this week because I knew I, I stole the show. But last week's show was definitely mm -hmm. one of the best shows and greatest conversations, you know, we've had here on Getting Color. That I have to say. Yeah, and you can always check that out. It's always on there, you know. I think Noel has it, it's on the Twitch, it's yes. on Anchor. We always have the links. Like, go on our Twitter and ask us if you need a link to it, and we'll give our Twitter handles at the end. So, Vito, first thing we're going to talk about. Normally, I kind of make this the big topic, but let's get this guy out of the way. This show, so we okay. can talk about other stuff. Roman Reigns. Um, he's getting a nice little part-time gig. I don't think he's going to be doing house shows anymore. I think he's going to actually be off of some. PLEs, premium live events. I don't think he's going to be at Hell in a Cell. Now, keep in mind, Vito, Money in the Bank is in a stadium. SummerSlam, which I'm surprised with, but you know how WWE is. SummerSlam is going to be in a stadium, obviously. What they do in Saudi Arabia is always in a stadium. And that thing in Wales, Clash yeah. at the Castle or whatever it's called, is going to be in a stadium. So you know it's pretty likely Roman Reigns will be at those, kind of like Brock Lesnar's always at big events. Right. What do you think, though, uh, with this? Like, it's all hearsay and rumors. Three months from now, we're going to be able to look back and see exactly what deal he is now. Got to spend time with family. He's a hardworking man. He could be having a couple small movie roles. What do you think? Is this just kind of taking back the house show schedule for him? You, what about Raw and SmackDown? All right. Let's address the people in the room. Jake, thank you very much for retweeting. Annette is here. How you doing, Annette? She's from Australia. Um, the Roman Reigns thing, guys, I think they're giving him a little bit of a break. He's been pulling the wagon. Yeah. He's been wrestling the house shows. He's been doing everything. He does deserve a rest. He, he does have health problems, which I think sometimes we overlook. And you know what? Sometimes you definitely need a break. You can't go on and on and on forever because eventually you will break down. So Roman Reigns taking a break. Good for him. He's been doing a great job. He's been um, he's been wrestling. There's nobody else in any brand any anywhere on the planet better than Roman Reigns right now. And let's face it, like even him probably cut back. I, just because of who he is, he'll probably work more than when we see the Brock Lesnar dates. You know what I mean? Brock yeah. specifically comes in for big angles, only a couple TVs leading into the big show. So I think Roman will be around more than a lot of people think. House shows will take off, maybe miss some Monday Night Raws. SmackDown is his show anyway on Fox. And you're right, he, the man deserves a break. So... I Speaking will say this. Of, yes. I will say this, right? And I know you've been a very big Roman Reigns supporter, okay? He has done an outstanding job. He's paid his dues. He came up from a guy who couldn't cut a promo to being a good promo guy. 
His wrestling improved from being from the shield to being a singles. He's learned how to be a champion, probably one of the, one of the better champions they've had over the last decade. So with him taking off, who is the predecessor for Roman Reigns? They do not have anybody ready. There is well, nobody. It's a great segue because one of my topics, Vito, and yes. it's going to we'll piggyback off what you just brought up there. He's got the title belts, and they're they're unified. Remember how they were their universal title was over right. here, the WWE title was over here. So if like Brock Lesnar held one of them but was gone for a while, they'd have the other champion. Well, Roman holds them both. We don't know when what they're going to do with those titles. When he's going to drop them, right? Could so let's focus on the other titles that they kind of don't treat well. What mm -hmm. could become the main championship where? It's what the fans want to see each week. And here are the things I'm going to propose to you. Could it be Ronda Rousey's SmackDown women's title? Could it be Bianca Belair's Raw women's title? Could it be the U.S. title with Austin Theory, who's the you know Vince McMahon guy, at least on TV? Remember when Cena did the whole U.S. title thing, open challenge? It, it meant right. something. It felt something. Now, that was John Cena. And everybody talks about the Intercontinental title, which I couldn't even tell you who the IC champion is right now. It's somebody, Ricochet, or somebody over on I think SmackDown. So. I think so. I think Could so. any of those be featured to where if Roman's not there all the time, they can at least try to make mm -hmm. one of those titles feel important, which piggybacks off your question. The person holding that title, female or male, could be the person that needs to be in the spotlight. What's your expertise opinion here? Right now, they're trying to push Cody Rhodes, right? And they're trying to yes. make him relevant. He is not the up. He is mid-card all the way. Um, and that says Drew McIntyre. McIntyre had his run. Um, but when you talk about who is the one guy who can make a difference in titles, I bring it back to The Miz. Now, if The Miz was in charge of one of the titles on either brand, now we have something to watch except Roman Reigns. And I think he would be an excellent choice, you know, to be the man that carries SmackDown and Raw. And if you don't mind me saying, I think he should be on both brands, going and representing whatever title he has and put an open challenge, you know, on every brand. He's My always opinion. a good go-to. I mean, he's he's had the Intercontinental title before, and it he made it feel like it still was what like it meant something. Remember back in the day, Vito, if you were the Intercontinental champion, you were almost the number one contender, almost you know, for the no, WWE championship, right. like like the Ultimate Warrior did, and Rick Mr. Rude. Perfect, Mr. Perfect was the ultimate number one contender who never got a shot at Hogan, which was yeah. very disappointing. I don't think they're going to be bringing anybody from NXT up anytime right. soon. Those guys are still getting like, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're experience grooming them to get into WWE TV mode and they, they either make it or they don't veto. Like I have a feeling this new NXT, if you don't show anything in 90 days, bye bye. Let's get the, you know, do you want to know like, something? Do you want to know something? You made You make a good point about something. What's that? Go ahead. What, what do we have at NXT? When I see NXT, they're trying to promote guys to be something. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like it was when Kevin Owens and that era of NXT guys was there. They Joe. haven't had a group like that in a very, very long time. That was a Triple now, H era. But not, I'm not saying Triple H era. I'm talking about talent-wise. Mm -hmm. You had Owens, you had Samoa Joe, I think you had Finn Balor, you had Enzo and Kaz, you had um, a few others down there, right? That I can't remember, but yeah. all I know is that at that time, NXT sold out the Barclays Center, 15,000 for there. NXT. You okay. were there. And I think that was probably one of, uh, one of the better groups to come out, and they have not had a group like that in a very long time. What they have now, and you look at these guys, it looks like an indie. There's no finished products. They're young characters. 
They don't have the they don't have the veterans next to them to make them relevant. Tony D'Angelo, right? Let's 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 use him. Okay. You like talking about that guy. No, but I'm gonna use him because there is somebody who has potential to do something. But if he was pulled with the right guys and he had the right people next to him, he could be something different. If somebody taught him how to be that guy instead of watching old veto tapes, then we'd be okay. You know what I mean? But if somebody was there with experience to take them along, you have Bron Breaker, right? Mm -hmm. Bron Breaker is the champion down there, right? Who better than a Scott Steiner to stand next to him cutting a promo and yeah. like making this guy turn heel and being somebody, you know, okay. Not Rick because Rick is mild mannered. Rick, it, he just never had that charisma. Yeah. But if you had Scott down there going down to NXT and he was cutting promos on NXT, do you know how many people would turn the channel on to see NXT? Do you know how much, how much the ratings would jump? You don't think they talked about it already and say, "Can we take a chance that he won't he won't screw us?" They really don't have any major major league ready talent in NXT. And I'm going to say something, and this is going to be something that everybody I want you to listen and write it down. WWE will eventually close NXT. Will they still have the performance center, though, to where they bring in wrestlers and still try to get them WWE ready? Just they not make have, a product, like a televised product out of it? The performance center will be a mandatory workout for wrestlers to go to, and everybody has to live in Florida and attend. Because NXT as a program, uh, I'm putting out money to do this. But if they made a cutback and cut back on their talent and they were to develop these people off TV and make the people on the Raw and SmackDown roster go to weekly workouts and not sit home, I think you'd have a better all-around roster and product. Now, keep in mind, too, when Roman's on this you know, part-time schedule during the summer – the Usos will still be there, and they're representing the bloodline. I'm sure Heyman will be by their side, and they might have all the tag titles, you know, soon too against Riddle and Orton. So maybe that'll be. I, I know Vince McMahon's got away from tag team wrestling the last 20 plus years. Maybe that'll be one of the main attractions, though. Now, did they? They did they? Did they acknowledge? Um, the DUI and is everything cool with that? Is he back on schedule? Did he anything happen with that? No, that, that was yeah, well, yeah, that was like he actually had that DUI in 2021. And since he's been back, I think what surfaced most recently, Vito, was the, the video interaction of him and the cop where he was like being right. dick back to the cop. Nothing right. came about from that once that video was released. So I haven't heard any bad behavior by Jimmy since, and you can only hope that he's learned his lesson and maybe Roman said, dude, you can't do it. Like, I, I'll save you this time, but you're running out of chances. And I think for the better part of the last year, both the Usos have been on their best behavior, nah, from what I understand. I They're my favorite tag team. I want to see I, them I'm continue. hoping it's behind them, right? There's no, nothing new that I know of. Right. I want to see them continue. I want to see them escalate. Yeah. I want to see them be the best tag team of all time. I want to see them be put up there with the Rock and Roll Express and the Legion of Doom and Demolition. I want to see the Uso brothers be something significant in the wrestling world where their legacy is something to look at and say, these guys were the shit in this generation of rest tag team wrestling. That's my observation. That's what I would like to see. I would like to see those those guys make make a make a stamp, you know, is to say, hey, we were better than the Rock and Roll Express. And the Rock and Roll Express is still wrestling, so what the hell? Bring them in down to SummerSlam and challenge them. If they beat the Rock and Roll Express, hey, it's a notch in their belt, right? So if they could make 
a singles title seem more important than it has been. Right. While Roman's kind of doing this summer schedule. Um, I mean, they've done this before and put the women in the main event of WrestleMania. I mean, this could be Bianca Belair and Ronda Rousey's time to make their respective titles seem legit again. But the, the problem is you still need to have the right feud, the right program, nothing stale. Becky and Ron, um, Becky and Bianca, that's old news. Who's going to work with Ronda with Charlotte out? Is Bailey ready to come back? And Ronda really, she doesn't hold her own on the mic in that presence. Vito, maybe this is Bianca Belair's time to be a star. I, I mean, the women should have the opportunity here, but can, I, can either one of them grab it? I got to tell you, Ronda Rousey, Bianca Belair match to main event, not juicy enough. Doesn't it doesn't grab me not one bit, not at all. And this is not a knock against them, it's just the positions that they're put in. But what happened to Charlotte Flair that she's out? I think it's a storyline. Um, just I think she doing a movie. No, I honestly don't know exactly why she's out. I don't think she's hurt, it just could be personal time, and it could just be to protect her, right? Because Rousey beat her, and you know. What are they going to do with her? It could be a creative thing. So as far as okay. I know, they did an arm injury or something that's going to keep her off TV for a bit. Okay. Reasonable. But the like what you said with the women, are they still doing Natty and the and the young girls down in NXT? I'm not sure. I know Natty's been like in a tag team. Uh, can't even say with who. But um, Asuka's back. So Oscar's she's back. shooting with Becky. I don't know who Bianca Belair is going to feud with for the Raw Women's title. And my guess is Bailey will probably pop back. She's got to be healthy by now. Sasha Banks, so, what happened uh, to her? Sasha's a tag champ with um, uh, Naomi. So they're in the tag division right now. And Dana Brooke, what is, uh, they're keeping Dana Brooke on the shelf still. Yeah, she's been like messing with 24 7. The 24 7 hilarious, you know, comedy bit. Yeah, that's stuff. right. She, they have her in the 24 7. Maybe, maybe the 24 7 title will get more TV time. I don't know, Vito. What a waste of time, that title. I can't stand it with a passion. I hate it. I, hate I knew it, it wasn't going to be anything when Mick Foley was the one to introduce it. Remember that? I remember. And I said, and I called it, it should be a TV title way back when. All right, before we talk about Ric Flair, we're going to, that was, yeah, I want people to like stay because mm -hmm. they're going to want to hear what you have to say about this because there's been some breaking news. Let's talk about the state of CM Punk because he's been back now since, you know, September of 2021. Mm -hmm. And he's, they're slowly creeping him up into the AEW title picture with Adam Page and, he just kind of been the whole happy to be there, you know, took seven years off. They're, they're not like he, – he doesn't have that presence that he had in WWE. Like, uh, and, and, again, it's a different situation, Vito. They pushed him as that voice of the voiceless against the machine, against Vince McMahon. And AEW, they love having him there. He's happy to be there. Like MJF is that, you know, is that role now that Punk was in WWF, WWE. What's I Punk just ain't doing it for me here, man. I, I mean, I feel like you're gonna use his name seven years off. He should have came right in, got shot to the top, won the title, and even if that meant he became a heel because he was holding the young talent back, at least he could have cut promos and he could have had some edge. I feel I'm bored with him. Okay, professionals take what is your take on the state of CM Punk? Triple H said it best. The reason you signed is because it was good for business at the time. But without the WWE platform, mm -hmm. does anybody really care about your pipe bombs? Do they make a difference? You need the WWE to be heard. He's on his own. He is not being heard. He doesn't have the same presence. He doesn't have the same platform as he did as a WWE superstar. This is AEW. It's a step down. Okay. So when they mix him in with all the rest of the people, he's a mix. He doesn't stand out as a superstar, just like Sting doesn't stand out, just like Billy Gunn doesn't stand out. Brian Danielson. Just, 
Brian Danielson doesn't stand. None of them stand out. When you when your champion was Kenny Omega, who was an indie darling, he come up and he stunk out the joint. Then you have Hangman Page, which does not move the needle for anybody. That horrendous angle they did with Impact to lower the standards of wrestling by going to a lower television to bring in another world champion to be a glorified, you know, hey, it's too sweet with all those guys, and then mosh it back to AEW did nothing to move the needle. Now, AEW is searching for another identity. Right now, the hottest commodity they have is Hook. In my opinion, now, is that cool? interestingly, interesting that you mentioned that. They did a right. non-televised dark segment, and this just could have been a seed planner where he choked out CM Punk. It was for well, the house, I, heard I think. I heard yeah. about it. I heard I, about I it. A burst in the world thing. I heard about it. But CM Punk waited too long. He thought he was bigger than what he was. And he thought he can come back seven years later and run the gauntlet. If he took a year off, settled down, but there was no place to go. If he would have kept relevant in wrestling, he went to MMA. He tried it. He did yeah. a great job. I give him a lot of credit for going in there and training and doing that stuff. Hats off to him, right? Yeah. And then he took off from that. He did a couple of other projects. Then finally he said, you know what? I'm coming back to wrestling. But it's seven years too late because your star is not as shiny as it was seven years ago. Without the WWE machine behind him either. Right. So you don't have the WWE platform. Nobody cares about the pipe bomb. Triple H was dead on was dead on point on point with that comment. And if anybody wants to listen and go back to that segment, go back and listen to the Triple H and CM Punk feud and listen to the war of words because what he says is 100% truth. And that's not a knock against CM Punk. He's, he's, a, he's a great talent. He's a good individual. He's constant pro, but they put him in a position where he could shine. Now, what if... By double or nothing, when it's all said and done, what if CM Punk becomes the AEW world champion by beating Hangman Adam Page? Right. Um, is that I think you have to turn the guy heel. I think he needs to be edgy. He needs to be pissed off. Because, I mean, I don't know. Like, what if Punk is the champion in a few months? If Punk is the champion in a few months. Because it could be. Could be then the guy he needs to attack is MJF to turn him babyface. And they is just that had that long, that long program too. So would they even entertain that? This is a weird scenario with MJF. You know how he's always in character, right? He's try, he tries to sell kayfabe being that a-hole. Uh, I don't know what to believe when I see him talking openly about not being happy with his contract. I mean, it's weird that, Tony Khan, if, if that was like a shoot, would allow that on his TV. But like, what do you think of that whole scenario? And he is good buddies with Cody. Could Cody be trying to lure him to WWE? I, I mean, MJF is an interesting piece in all of this. You know? Okay. When you're on top and you're 5'10 or 5'11, you're not the biggest guy in the world. <clears throat> And, you, and they give you the freedom to be a mouthpiece, okay? And you're on, you are the top heel on a company. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. He's complaining about money. He's making more money than he ever did in his whole life. So what are you complaining about? Your contract is not up yet. You're trying to promote yourself into something. And the Garden of Eden is never the WWE because they will snatch you up. You're not bigger than Roman Reigns. You're not bigger than Brock Lesnar. You're not bigger than AJ Styles. You're not bigger than Edge. You're not bigger than Riddle. You're not bigger than... You will be a mid-carder, and they will not give you the mic. They will not let you speak. You will be scripted and halted, and you will be a job boy. And I believe... Him acting like he could go anywhere in a couple of years. Dude, I think he knows he's got to stay in AEW. And I think him and Tony Khan already have that deal worked out. And this is just a bunch of hoopla to make fans talk about him. 
I think he definitely stays in AEW. Now, let me ask you what, here, for everybody out there who's going to watch, you know, the millions and millions who watch this show, MJF against Brock Lesnar. MJF and who versus Brock Lesnar? That's what I would say. Okay. MJF against Roman Reigns. MJF and against a, and Bobby a Lashley. Match? Yeah. MJF oh. against Drew McIntyre. But in wrestling fans' minds, they should all be able to work together if MJF uses his head. Uses his head against these monsters? Come on, guys. Let's face it. It would be MJF versus The Miz. MJF versus Cody. MJF versus KO. Rollins. Those group of people. Card guys. No superstars. Stay in your lane. Stay where you are. MJF, you're doing great where you are. Stay there. You don't want to go to the other side. All right, Vito. We got time for one more topic. And I believe he's 72, 73 years old. And recently it showed him doing some bumps with Jay Lethal in a ring, which (sighs) I mean, like, if he needs to go get his fix on in the ring, like, why can't they do that privately? Like, you know, Ric Flair, anybody, he could be 80 years old and go take dives in a pool, go fall and do a bump in a ring because that's, you know, whatever. But now he's going to wrestle in July in Nashville? What is going, like, is this because Vince McMahon did this and Austin came back at WrestleMania? What? Tell me, from your point of view, Vito, it's the love of the game. We get it. But oh my God, Vito, Ric Flair is going to wrestle. Rumor, I have, I have. Here's no, the rumor. It's it's probably no going to be a mat, tag match, right? Six man, where he can be Good. protected. But still, have at it, guys. I have the utmost respect for Ric Flair. I wrestled him when he was Ric Flair. I was in the ring with him. He was still the man. He was still commanded respect. He still was, he still was the guy. You know what I mean? He still was the man. Over the years, I've seen him do some things that Ric Flair of the era before would never do. And I'm like, why would you do these things when you carried yourself as the as the main event that you were you 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 were Vito LaGrasso with swag? And nobody could beat you. You had nothing. You were the most handsome guy on the face of the earth. Your friggin' your private was the biggest thing that ever hit Broadway. You 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 are the man, right? Your shoes are always good. Your cars are always tight. Your crib is always good. The pool is right next door. You got everything going. You got ladies. You got cars. You got jewelry. You got Versace. You got uh, Rolex. You got it all. Why ruin that? To go in. So many years later, after you seen guys not live up to what they say, the ultimate warrior is the perfect example. You don't wait 15 years to come back and say, okay, I'm here. Ric Flair had, and this after after impact, the greatest thing he did in impact was the Jay Lethal thing, right? I watched that interview all the time because I think it's great, right? I think it was the best thing he did. Other than that, his retirement with Shawn Michaels and that whole era right there. I was there for that. It was great. It was great. But then you get sick, you have personal problems, all this other stuff comes up. And then at 70 something years old, you're walking around in the ring and you're walking slow. Now I am the biggest gym rat you ever met. I am a, I am like a fitness freak. I take care of myself and do it. If I thought for a second I would embarrass myself, I would not step back in that ring, and I would never do it because I was a beast. Look what happened with with Vince McMahon. He was never a wrestler either, but, like, boy, that was some ugly stuff at wrestling. That was an ugly stuff, right? So here I just came back from Canada, right? I wrestled one day in a row. Then I got two days in a row. I'm in the gym. I'm doing the stuff, and I'm saying, I know – I could do it for another year and I could get back to being Vito, right? If I was given an opportunity, I could, I can do it. Mm -hmm. If I was going to say, okay, gym, shake, train, wrestle. 
I can do it. My body can handle it. I know I have the speed. I know I have the agility. I know I can do it. When you don't have those attributes no more and your body doesn't look like it used to. Now, my body doesn't look WWE crisp. My body looks good. And you're talking 76 years old after you have a stint, you had heart problems, you almost died. You know, and this is nothing, no knock on Ric Flair. He's just yeah. talking common sense in real, li real life. You go to Hogan's, you have karaoke, you're having a good time. You said, I got a dog, I'm trying to live real life. But you're still in that ring. And you're trying to bump at 76 years old. There's got to be something else you could do. I always thought he could be the ambassador of wrestling, be a general manager, come out as somebody superior. Not this. Not going to do a match. Remember, everybody, now listen here. Remember when Hogan and Flair tried to do that independent show and it was a total shit fest? Does everybody remember that one? Flair was out of shape. Hogan was out of shape. Yeah. They all thought that they, they were going to go in there and it was going to be the old times. Then they try to do color to make up for it, weren't they both? They gushing? shit the bed so bad it was embarrassing to both of their legacies. And that was uh, over a decade ago, right? Now I'm not on the. I am not on the level of Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair, but. When it comes to being a professional and doing what you need to do, knowing I might not be able to do this no more and I might not be able to do this no more. But I know if I stay grounded and, you know, stay planted, I know I can facilitate myself to be good. Still, there are things you can do, things you can't do. When you don't practice every day, you get rusty. Your body's not used to it. Your body has to get used to it again. And at 76, how many good how many good bumps or how fast can you wrestle? Or we've seen it all. There's nothing you're going to show us in the magic box. No. Nope. Unless you came back in a different persona, the evil Ric Flair shaved your head, come back like Kevin Sullivan, and then like, okay, now we're going, now we're seeing something. I mean, like you had, you're in a. He'd have to be in a six-man tag, get the hot tag just to come in and put on the figure four. <laughs> I mean, that would – and is is that almost false advertising at that point, getting the fans' expectations up, and he does guys, nothing, but at least he'd be safer. Guys, I tag team with the Iron Sheik back in the day, right? I was a tag team partner. We did a few shows. The one match I did that I could tell you, Iron Sheik, Skull Von Crush, the Rock and Roll Express. Vito, going to have to do no match. Yeah, I know. Vito, got to keep the Sheik limited. I said, oh. now, the Iron Sheik, I have the utmost respect for. I took care of him. And so did the Rock and Roll. You know, Sheik wanted to come in. I'm going to get in that. You give me the Sheik tag. The son of a bitch, Jabroni. I'm going to put the camel clutch. I hook it. Then I tag you. That was it. It's just so you could do the Kelma Clutch, right? So I did yeah, the whole yeah, match. Yeah. I didn't care. But it was out of respect, not only for the Iron Sheik, but for the Rock and Roll Express, because those guys I wrestled with in Memphis. And here I come back and I'm here again. And here we are doing this with, um, uh, doing this with, uh, what do you call it? With the Iron Sheik. And he couldn't walk and he was bleeding in his boots. You know, but... You look at that and say, do I, Vito LaGrasso, want to have my life and my legacy and my well-being that? The answer is no. You know why? Because I accepted real life and I have a beautiful, I live in a beautiful place. I have beautiful cars, beautiful clothes. I look good. My body's still intact. You know, um, I have a beautiful wife. You know, I have beautiful female fans. I have beautiful everyday fans. I have guy fans. I have little kids who still love me, you know. And if I was an old gray-haired man with a big belly, would I go out there in a dress just to make a couple bucks? No, I would never. I would never do it. Yep. I would never do it. I would never. Do it. If I didn't look like Vito, it wouldn't happen. Self-respect, real life. That's where it is. It's just like Mr. Virtue here, right? Now, everybody used to get on him in no DQ. But everybody's saying, hey, 
This is an educated man with a good job, real life, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about what he did in his real life with his parents, his family, dogs, his, you know, everything that, that he's doing. He's in a good relationship. He's looking towards his future. No DQ is not the top of his realm, like everybody thinks. Um, getting color with the big Vito brand is not the ultimate for him. This is something we do as a hobby. This mm -hmm. is something me, him and I enjoy. We're friends off there. We have real life. You know what I mean? So, guys, if you think that this needs, this is the old, you know, end all, you're mistaken. Plan B is always a good option to be happy. Yep. Go ahead. Agree. Well said. That's it. Like, I mean, we had a net here. We had Razor Sharp here. And, you know, it's always great having them listen to us. And Noel will get this up on Anchor and audio form. That's and, it. hey, to be continued. I mean, this Ric Flair match is supposed to happen in early July, and you know we'll be covering it. So let's see if it even comes to fruition. I, I really hope – I really hope – and I'm not saying nothing bad. If he does do it, I hope – it goes okay, and then it gets out of his system. If he thinks yeah. WWE is going to sign him again to be Rick Flair, it's not happening. If he thinks AEW is going to sign him again to be the man, that's not happening. The only place I think he has a chance to wrestle, NWA. Yeah, because he used to that used to be his, you know, right. stomping grounds back in the day. Well. Well, you know, to be continued, we'll obviously right. bring some of these topics up again as we get more information or they happen. Be sure to go over on Twitter and follow Vito at the Big Vito brand. Follow me if you would like at no DQ underscore virtue. Check out the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash big V Mafia. But this has been getting color with Big Vito Lagrasso and Virtue right here on the Big Vito brand.com. Thanks for watching, listening. We will see you again next week.